Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Lord's Day for worship here at St. Mark. Whether you are here in person or joining us online, we thank you for being with us. And we pray God's blessings um, on our worship together in the name of Jesus. We'll follow the order of service that you find in the bulletin or on the screen to the left. We'll begin with the opening hymn, Were You There? But first of all, if you would just take a moment to greet those folks who are seated by you. If you see a face you don't recognize, please be sure you welcome them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart, and confess our sins, asking Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice. For the evil I have done, and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me, for Jesus' sake. Dear ones, I have good news. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. 
Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we'll continue with the Lord have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. And during the season of Lent, we omit the singing of the Gloria. So we'll continue with the salutation. The Lord be with you. And, also with you. and we pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power to defend ourselves. Guard and keep us both outwardly and inwardly from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all the evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. We'll turn our attention to the scripture readings for this day today, which is the second Sunday in Lent. Our first reading comes from the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, and is these selected verses from chapter 26 of his prophecy. But as soon as Jeremiah finished telling all the people everything the Lord had commanded him to say, the priests, the prophets, and all the people seized him and said, you must die. Why do you prophesy in the Lord's name that this house will be like Shiloh, and this city will be desolate and deserted? And all the people crowded around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard about these things, they went up from the royal palace to the house of the Lord and took their places at the entrance of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and all the people, this man should be sentenced to death because he has prophesied against this city. You've heard it with your own ears. Then Jeremiah said to all the officials and all the people, the Lord sent me to prophesy against, against this house and this city all the things you've heard. Now reform your ways and your actions and obey the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent and not bring the disaster he has pronounced against you. As for me, I am in your hands do with me whatever you think is good and right. Be assured, however, that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. As far as the words of the inspired prophet Jeremiah will continue with the singing of the psalm for the day.
Our second scripture reading uh, for today comes from St. Paul's letter to the congregation in Philippi, uh, the concluding verses of chapter 3 and the opening verse of chapter 4. Join together, Paul writes, in following my examples, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. This is part of the words of the Apostle Paul. Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Please stand in honor of the gospel. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 13. Glory be to you, O Lord. And this will also serve as our sermon text for today. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day.
Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Heavenly Father, sanctify us in thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, dear friends, I'd like to take a look with you now for a few minutes at our gospel reading for today from Luke's Gospel, chapter 13. Uh, we've titled this, uh, Jesus Confronts His Enemies. This uh, takes place, um, according to Luke's Gospel, somewhere between the transfiguration and Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem some months later. It's a long, slow journey that he takes. Uh, during this journey, Luke tells us that there was um, times when great crowds followed Jesus. And uh, just to give you an idea of that, one of those great crowds was, was uh, that crowd that Jesus fed one day with five loaves and two small fish, just to give you an idea of the crowds that followed Jesus from time to time on this trip. Uh, St. Luke also tells us that the uh, Pharisees and other enemies of Jesus were absolutely relentless in, in hounding Jesus with questions, trying to challenge him again and again, and seeing if there was some way that they could trip him up. And so we come to um, a good example of that, which is our, our incident for today. So it sounds, doesn't it, like, uh, like the Pharisees, in a moment of weakness maybe or something, actually had a little bit of concern for Jesus? Uh, don't we wish? Unfortunately, it's just not, not so. So what they do is they come to Jesus and they say, we, you need to get out of here and get someplace else because Herod wants to kill you. Well, there's a couple things in that regard. First of all, Herod's been trying to kill Jesus from early on. In fact, St. Mark tells us very early in Jesus' ministry that the Pharisees and the followers of Herod got together to try to figure out a way to kill Jesus. That's in Mark chapter 3. That's very early in Jesus' ministry. So those two have been actually colluding to try to bring Jesus to an early demise rather than one against the other as, as the Pharisees try to lay out here for today. More than likely, what the Pharisees are trying to do is get Jesus away from these large crowds, you see. Get him out someplace where he's maybe more isolated, a little more by himself, which would be a far better opportunity than for them to bring him to his, to his death. So this is why Jesus, when he responds, he says, you go tell that fox, Herod, not calling Herod or anybody else names, that's not the point. The point is he's using a fox, which is a wonderful symbol of a very sly, cunning animal, to symbolize what's going on here with the Pharisees and with Herod as well. Their sly and cunning ways to try to undermine Jesus' ministry and certainly to try to take him away from his upcoming suffering and death in Jerusalem. And Jesus says in, in picturesque way, it ain't happening. You are not deterring this ministry. You go tell Herod that I'm going to continue casting out demons. I'm going to continue healing the sick, sick today and tomorrow. And the third day I will reach my goal. All this is symbolic language. But that term, reach my goal, refers to the culmination of the Father's will for him, which was to travel to Jerusalem where he would suffer and die, lay down his life for the sins of the world, to bring about along with his perfect life as our substitute under God's law an absolutely perfect salvation that God could then take to the ends of the earth through his people. By the way, it's kind of interesting that that term, reach my goal, comes from the same root word that Jesus used for one of his last words on the cross when he said, it is finished. It's kind of a neat connection. 
he had reached his goal. He had laid down his life as a perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. And then Jesus goes into this lament, huh? For Jerusalem, quite the lament. It's important that you understand that when Jesus uses Jerusalem here, he uses it in a couple different senses. We sometimes call it the narrow sense and the wider sense. When he's talking about reaching his goal, that will take place in the actual physical city of Jerusalem. When he talks about, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who's killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you and so forth, He's not just talking about the city of Jerusalem. He's talking about all of God's Old Testament people. And it's important, dear ones, that you and I stop for just a second and think about those Old Testament people. Because it'll help you to understand, I think, a little bit of where Jesus is at as he's speaking to these Pharisees on this day. Got to go back 1,700 years from the time of Jesus to get back to the days of Abraham, God calling Abraham. An Aramean, he's called. Uh, We read that last Sunday in in Deuteronomy. An Aramean that he called to himself, completely to himself, away from everything. Leave your family, leave everything behind. And follow me. I'll tell you where, I'll show you where you're going. And Abraham did that and sojourned with Sarah in the land of Canaan, as did their son Isaac, and as as their grandson Jacob also did as well. Those men were characterized by their own weaknesses, to be sure, but they were characterized by worshiping the Lord and growing in their knowledge of who this one was that had called them away to follow just him. We come to those years in the land of Egypt, which ended up being, first of all, there were good years, but then horrible years. Horrible years of slavery. Moses leading them out and leading them towards the promised land. But already there, dear ones, that generation of Moses is characterized as stiff-necked, stubborn, resisting God's will. Then comes Joshua and this wonderful generation that served the Lord, followed him. As long as Joshua and the elders that were with Joshua survived. And as soon as they were dead and buried, the book of Judges tells us after that generation, namely Joshua's generation, had passed away, another, listen to this folks, it's unbelievable, Another generation grew up who did not know the Lord. How did they not know the Lord? The one who had opened the sea for their grandparents and great-grandparents, who had fed them with manna from heaven, water from a rock, for goodness sakes. How could they not know about him? And beginning there, dear ones, is a nonstop history of people who would turn from the Lord again and again and turn to Him only when they were in a sticky wicket and needed help. And guess who was with them the whole time? St. Paul has just this really interesting phrase in 1 Corinthians 10 when he's talking about the water uh, being provided from a rock for those people in the desert. And you know what he says? That rock was Christ. Isn't that interesting? This beloved Savior was with them every step of the way reached out, called to them again and again, sent them marvelous prophets, including this Jeremiah that we just read. And what a reaction Jeremiah got, huh? When he brought the word of the Lord to those people. Again and again they rejected Jesus. And now 1,700 years after Abraham, here's Jesus standing in front of some of Abraham's descendants, these Pharisees. 
And he's listening to them in their sly and cunning ways, trying to undermine the same ministry of the gospel that their forefathers had tried to undermine for oh so many years. And Jesus watched it all. Now, does that help you to understand the pain in Jesus' heart when he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who stone the prophets, I mean, kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And what's the next phrase? You were not willing. A non-stop, I mean, this is just like those of you who are my age, you remember the old records? Be playing along something very beautifully and then all of a sudden there'd be some little thing on the record and it'd make it skip and it'd bounce back. Come to the same place, bounce back. You think it's going to go this time and keep playing? Nope, bounces back again. That's what's going on. That's what Jesus has seen happen with these people for hundreds of years. This, dear ones, by the way, is only um, uh, it's just a brief hint. He's, he's talking about your place will be left to you desolate. And this is just a hint of what Jesus will get into a little further when he actually gets to the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Luke alone tells us that after those wonderful events, the Hosannas and all the rest of that, Jesus comes around a corner, Luke tells us, on the road, and there's Jerusalem right in front. And Luke, folks, tells us, well, the English is very kind. It says Jesus wept over the city. Jesus sobbed. In fact, the word means to convulse. This was the grief in the heart of the Son of God over people he had reached out to for hundreds of years, but you were not willing. Does this give you a little idea, dear ones, of how Jesus confronts his enemies? Unbelievable patience and compassion to the point where after having sent all of these representatives of, of his, he comes himself in flesh and blood. Sent, as he once said, to the lost sheep of Israel to reach out one more time, to call them to repentance. Folks, it's so important that we understand this. This isn't just a history lesson. It's not the point. The point is, there's twofold. There's two points to this. The first point is, just as Jesus treated his Old Testament people, so he will treat you and me. After that beautiful verse where we talk about God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, John goes on by saying, for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. That heart of compassion that can be found only in God was manifested in His Son as He continued to reach out to His enemies and as, dear ones, He continues to reach out to you and me. We've come before our God again as we have just about every Sunday we come together and confessed our sins. It's such a, almost a passing moment in the service. But there's nothing that's richer, dear ones, than you and me joining hands together, hearts and hands together to confess our sins and then hearing God come to you and me and say, I forgive you. God will blow your mind. <laughs> it's just the most amazing thing. There's no other God that's like this, folks. Everybody else wants their pound of flesh one way or another, God says, you know that pound of flesh? I gave it for you. It's already been paid. In the fountain 
filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And you and I get the privilege, dear ones, by God's grace, by God's sheer grace and mercy, to hear these words and, and instead of turning our back to those words, to be drawn to our Savior and this most amazing love and forgiveness that for a reason that is lost in the beautiful word grace is still extended to you and me. So that's the first point. second point is just simply this. You and I are here for a reason. You've got to understand that, folks. We are here to be blessed as we worship our God and with our brothers and sisters in Christ here in this house. And we are to be strengthened, dear ones, so that you and I might continue to go out into this world that continues to reject Jesus and extend to them this incredible love. You and I are to be, Jesus called us, the light of the world. And whether that's in your classroom at school or your little cubicle or something at work, whether it's with your friends or your family, dear ones, there is work for us to do. There's a world that's absolutely lost in darkness and continues to reject every effort from God to call to them, to bring them to Him. But God didn't quit, you see. He never quit. The Pharisees weren't going to make Him quit. Herod wasn't going to get Him to quit. Nobody was going to get Him to quit. He was absolutely focused on the Father's will for Him, and it was to lay down His life for the sins of the world, and nothing was going to stop Him from that. In the blessing of the Holy Spirit, dear ones, may you and I have that same conviction, that same yearning for the people who are around us who are lost without Jesus. Because, you know, as Jesus talked in those, in those verses, there's, there is a day coming. We call it Judgment Day. And it's for sure coming. The date is set. In fact, it was set already before Jesus put a foot on this earth. God isn't up in heaven with a whole pile of calendar books. You know, pick out one page through and see, uh, does that look like a day for Judgment Day? Uh, no, we'll throw that one away and pick another. Uh-uh. It is set in stone, folks. And when that day comes, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now that will go in one of two ways. Either it will go well for them by God's grace, and Jesus will bring them together with all the saints as his bride, the church, and take them to be with him forever. There is only one other option. And it is so horrible, it goes beyond description. There's no way to describe the suffering in hell, the separation from God. And that's for all who do not acknowledge Jesus as Savior. I tell you that, folks, because you rub elbows with people that you may enjoy being with, that you may even love, who do not know Jesus. You also rub elbows with some enemies of Jesus. Absolutely, maybe enemies of yours. They all need you. As precious as you are to Jesus, to let your light shine in the world in which you live and all to the glory of our great God and Savior. Praise His holy name. Amen. Would you please stand? Dear ones, may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you would please now join with me in one of the ancient creeds of the Christian church. It's the
the Nicene Creed today. We'll use that as an expression of our Christian faith. Please join me. We'll, we'll read it together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our offering. And during our offering, and, and also for you folks at home, there's an opportunity for you to let us know that you worshiped with us this day. Here at church, there are the friendship pads. We ask you please to fill those out for us. If you're watching at home, there's a connection card that we ask you please to fill out as well. So we have a record of your attendance with us today. Thank you. And we'll bow our heads in prayer. When I survey the wondrous cross on which a prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a tribute far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this hour of worship and the opportunity to be together with brothers and sisters in Christ, to stand in awe of your love for us, secured through the life and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus, and extended to us freely by your grace, week after week after week, day after day. We thank you, dear Lord, for showing us how you dealt with your enemies, reminding us again of how you dealt with your enemies here on this earth again and again reaching out to them in love, calling them to repentance, assuring them of your love, promising that you would relent, 
if they would but turn to you. It is a message, dear Lord, that we ourselves need to hear again and again. To be reminded, dear Father, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but that we are justified by your grace through the redemption that came through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Not only do we need this refreshment, dear ones, we need the reminder as well that you've left us here on this earth to continue the ministry that you extended to your Old Testament people and to take this ministry to the ends of the earth, to our own little worlds, dear Father, to the nooks and crannies, to the people we bump into, and to share with them, O oh Lord, as you give us opportunity, this incredible love and patience you have for sinful human beings like us and like them. Into your keeping, O oh Lord, we commit our called pastor, Pastor Borman, as he and his wife conclude their ministry in Aiken, South Carolina, and make their plans to move to us here in Mankato and to serve us and to serve you, O oh Lord, as together we work in your kingdom. Please grant them safety, O Lord, and an uneventful move from South Carolina to here in Minnesota. And great blessing, O Lord, as they undertake the work that you've called them to do here. We also lift up to you our recently called Mrs. Sarah Coles to serve us at Risen Savior Lutheran School in Meredith Milbrath's place. We pray that you guide and bless Sarah and help her to know your will, O oh Lord, for her in this matter. To give her clarity, O oh Lord, and then strength, dear Father, whether she continues her work that she is currently involved in or if she comes here. O oh Lord, may you bless her that she in turn may be a blessing. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with the preparation for the celebration of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is good, good and right, right so to, to do. do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who willingly died under the curse of this world's sin so that we may live forever in the light of God's blessing. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace 
and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. And we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Would you please stand? We'll continue with the song of Simeon. Please join me. give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive now our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Good morning once again, folks. Thanks for being here on this day. I have several announcements. We'll try and get through them just as quickly as we can. I want to welcome anyone who's visiting with us today. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we pray God's blessings. Please come back and, and join us again. Uh, this one is for the youth group. Uh, there is a youth group meeting this Tuesday at Polito's. Am I saying that right? Yes. yes. Polito's at 7 o'clock. Uh, pizza purchase is optional, 
so I'd, I'd probably come fed, you know, uh, because at 7.30 you're going across the street to the escape room. Uh, the reservation is already paid in full, um, but you must let Lisa know if you're coming so that we have an idea of the number of kids who are coming. That's this Tuesday night. Um, oh, before I forget again, I just wanted to extend a thank you to the sound guys and the screen guys. They've been busy. If you look up the balcony when you're walking out, it'll look like it's brand new. Cleaned everything out and they put everything in the, in the cubby hole there in the back. And thank you so much for all the work that you put into that. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, uh, there's an Easter for Kids sign-up sheet uh, for help. That Easter for Kids event is uh, Saturday, April 9th here at St. Mark and at Risen Savior. And you'll find the sheet out in the entryway. We'll need help in various areas. Please uh, help us out and help us uh, pull off this Easter for Kids event. Okay. Then, um, we, like I mentioned in the prayer, we called Mrs. Sarah Coles, who lives here in Mankato. She's uh, acknowledged that she received the call. This is her letter. Dear members of Risen Savior Lutheran School, this week I have been given the joyful opportunity to consider a call to Risen Savior Lutheran School as third and fourth grade teacher. In Romans 12, Paul reminds us to use our gifts and talents in humble service to the church. In the coming weeks, I will be prayerfully considering where I can best serve with the time and talents the Lord has given me. I'm eager to learn about the ministry at Risen Savior, and I humbly ask for your prayers as I deliberate this call in joyful service to the Lord, Sarah Cole. So we'll uh, lift her up in prayer, and, and we'll pray God's blessings, and we'll wait to hear how the Lord leads her in the coming weeks. Um, thankfully, there's no date on this letter from Pastor Borman that I should have read to you two weeks ago, um, but I can forget about that because there's no date. It's like I received it yesterday. Here's his letter. Dear Mr. Galen Holtzheter and St. Mark Congregation, the time I have held the call to your church has been a rich time in my life. I thank God for the time I had in prayer, conversation, and reflection. During this time, I have rejoiced in what the Lord has done at peace. Peace has gone from non-existence eight and a half years ago to a thriving, confident ministry in Aiken, South Carolina. To have been a witness and participant in what the Lord has done has been one of the most joyous experiences of my life. At the same time, I've had the chance to speak with your leaders. They have shared with me your mission and vision. I have sensed conviction and determination to reach Mankato, the 36,000 unchurched people right here in Mankato, and have thrilled to hear how you want to move forward into your core values that reflect the heart of God in the scriptures. In consideration of this, I thought about what exactly it means for me to be a pastor who bears the biblical directive to fan into flame the gift of God from 2 Timothy chapter 1, and who commits himself to pursue the kingdom of God with, with his life. I've become convinced that St. Mark is that place. For this reason, I am accepting your call to St. Mark. I make this decision with confidence and joy that my Lord will go with me to Mankato with both his power and his grace, and further that he will richly bless our partnership in the gospel for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the coming days, I will communicate with you as we make plans for my family's transition to Mankato. In the meantime, I would ask that you keep peace's pastoral needs and my family's preparations for the move in your prayers. Finally, join me in earnest prayer that the Lord would bind us together in love and mission and use us profoundly to reach the Mankato area with the gospel. I am with you, declares the Lord, from Haggai chapter 1. In Christ, Reverend, Reverend Jonathan Borman. Yeah. Told you it'd be worth the wait, didn't I? It's a great letter. We're looking forward. Please do keep him in your prayers. I see a hand. Marty? Thank you. So if you, it, 
Thanks, Marty, for doing that for me. I appreciate it. I forgot that. Thank you. God bless you, folks. Have a good week.